Hello, welcome to another episode of Global Pause Rethink the Future. So in today's podcast, I want to look at the slow movement. So in reference to what we talk about when we talk about, you know, receiving our time as an economic good and the way how we can look to unwind time as a constraint that would then free up uh, or unbound, uh, unbind that that constraint. And so as a result of that, we would not be ordered against time and so therefore, to a degree, achieve a lot of the objectives of the slow movement. So for any of those who really aren't aware of the slow movement, it came about in Italy primarily as a guy that protested against the opening of McDonald's. So it originally it was to do with food um, but then it's kind of broadened out into more relates to fashion as well so about artisanship about localizing kind of food systems as well um, about maybe more craft that goes towards things more care um, and ultimately a cultural um, you know dynamic so I think that the slow movement's important in the sense that it points towards art you know, if we're looking at at art as a way of life, then I think the slow movement as, as a movement of culture is kind of really pointing towards that. So, you know, the best way to approach any movement towards art is then to look at the, the how we produce commodities. And I always say that, you know, to be market oriented presupposes that the consumer is the is the main good, is the product. Okay, so then it's just a way how, you know, your existence is monetized. But it's presupposed that the way of life is never questioned. Uh, our market oriented way, the way of life, the the life is never questioned in reference to the way towards it. It's just accepted as a given. We accept that. If you think that, you know, if you were to say, well, there's a problem with our way of life, a market oriented way of life, then the natural kind of um, uh, accusation is that you're advocating for some kind of socialism or communism or anything else like that. That's invariably what happens. But when you're looking at it from just from a way of life and being market orientated, it's got nothing to, obviously to do with that. It's actually got to do with our temporality, our, our lived experience of life. And I suppose acknowledging certain the spiritual disease of our way of life. So what is one of the spiritual disease or what is the primary cause of our spiritual disease? And ultimately I always talk about it's to do with the, what our understanding of time, really. So if you're looking at a slow movement and we're putting it in context to what I, I consider to be the, the spiritual disease that we're grappling with, and that is to do with time, well, then the slow movement kind of points towards, towards a way of engaging in trying to understand the problem without necessarily kind of um, finding a solution. And maybe that's because of the the way how it gets framed. It's not framed um, in context to well slow movement. We're not even approaching it from slowing it down. We're just removing the blight of a constraint that works on you. So we're going to be looking at that. So let's look at that now. So you know, if our wants are primary because money is a given. It's only because the preeminent good of our time underwrites our wants. So if it, uh, if time underwrites our wants, so our time in the market, it means to say that we've secured our time as a means. So a means towards the ends that we presuppose. So in, in the context of the market is our want satisfaction. But ultimately those wants are a means towards an end, which is towards life. So the want of life. So we have made ourselves in towards a means towards the end that we presuppose. All right. So because of that means end continuum and the marginal way how we determine whether or not we are an end or a means in the sense of, say, you know, our leisure versus our labor, well, that marginality or that threshold that is determined is within you. There's no market for your time outside you. So if there's no place for your time, then you are beholden to an unavowed utopianism because you are orientated towards securing your time as a supplement. All right, so time, when time is turned into an economic good, it's turned into a supplement. Now, why is that important from the aspect of, say, the slow movement uh, as far as culture goes? 
Well, it's understanding uh, that an economic good, uh, when, when time is made into an economic good, it obviously orders us against it. So I often talk about that you economise your time independent uh, from your wants. So that means to say that um, you might have a want of an ice cream, so that's the reason why you'll go down to the street and buy it rather than make it. So you're economising your time independent of that want. And so that is what the convenience of the market allows. It allows you to save, save that time. And any, any form of activity that they're focused on is about economising time. But the economization of time, what, is that, what does that mean when you're saying that you're economizing time? Well, you're economizing some, uh, an economic good. Okay, so you're, uh, when, you, when you're saying ec- you're economizing time, we're saying, we're saying it like it's neutral, but it presupposes that time has been turned into an economic good. And it presupposes that time, if it's an economic good and money claims it, then ultimately it's orientated towards money. So the movement towards an artful way of life ultimately looks at the way how you can remove money as the means of securing the end. Now, if you're removing money as the means towards securing the end, then you're creating a dynamism where it's ultimately removing that preeminent good of your time because you don't have to secure it. You're engendering the culture. This is what the slow movement wants to engender, is is to engender a culture that would allow things to be done in their own time, in the time given as it such. But maybe the framing of it is is a little bit different because it doesn't give due context to what underwrites the production of a commodity. So let's have a look at that. So what underwrites a, a production of a, com- a commodity? You might have uh, the means... Um, the factors of production that you economise, so therefore you're looking at the way how you can drive efficiencies within the, um, your practices to to economise on inputs. But if you're looking at the way how a commodity is produced, invariably the underwriter is time. The time is the constraint that you work against. So, you know, once again, you can economise on the means of production just as like you can economise uh, time independent from the means of production. All right, so the economisation of of time independent of the means is mo- one of the most important factors when you're trying to derive um, or um, drive efficiencies into your production processes. So obviously you're going to produce more per per unit of time so if you're economizing on the actual factors of production that goes in towards the good but then you're also uh, economizing on time independent of those factors that's the ultimately where you can generate a return so in this case you are overproducing because you've got you're working against a uh, uh, the constraint of time in order to drive more efficiencies into into your production processes. So the issue here is is that the only thing that you can produce, the only the, a, a, a commodity is nothing else than something that's produced when it's ordered against time. Art has doesn't have anything; it doesn't work against the constraint. An artisan, it doesn't work in the sense that you you are. That, that the production of an object has a time constraint that it has to work against it in order for it to be given. That's what is essentially art. Art is about art is produced in it in the time given for for the allowance, what is allowed for that thing to be given as given. There's nothing about it will take as long as what it takes for the artist to, to produce that work of art. And there's nothing that can basically make it um, occur any faster than what it has to. Now, is there a way that we can orientate the way how we receive objects or, or, or objects that would otherwise be considered to be commodities to be produced as, an, as, to produce as art? Now, the only way that you can do that is if you have a culture that is, in, that is that's dynamic enough that is removing the marginal way how that we receive our time as an economic good. Because the economic good of time underwrites not only your means towards an end, but then so the economization that you put into play, but also the economization um, independent of the means of production. The, the, the critical thing here is that when you're looking at um, engendering culture, you literally are starting with you. If you are the product of a way of life, 
then ultimately it comes down to to, to economising, you know, time independent of the factors of the production. It will come as a natural consequence of addressing you as the as the commodity or the the first product of our of our way of life. All right, it it works in that way because if you're removing the constraint of time against yourself, then the the, the demand for production. Um, as such to, to, to drive efficiencies into production processes in order to generate a return are simply just not there because the culture that you've engendered just doesn't, it doesn't, it's, it's shifted. It's shifted its focus from something that's done artfully rather than that's something that's done for a return. Now, in the context here, what's the, what would be the return? Well, it's about nothing else than, okay, that, that I've invested X amount of money and so therefore I'm going to produce so many to generate a maximum yield for the effort because I've defined opportunity according to a market. Now, a culture is not beholden to a market. Uh, culture is outside the scope of the opportunity that that is, that is always, a def- where, um, if you're defining the production of a good, is always beholden to so if you're looking at the opportunity for culture and you're looking at for the opportunity to, for things to be done artfully, well, the opportunity for the way how a thing is made is not beholden to the opportunity as defined by a market. It's the opportunity as defined by the culture. Right? And there, there are worlds, they're, they're absolutely irreconcilable in, in that manner. So let's look at the way how that you would the way how unwinding uh, the constraint on ourselves that we accept potentializes the way how things are given artfully. So in the context of, like I always talk about, that you have to potentialize your time beyond the economic good in order you to temporalize place for a common surpassing. So that is the kind of the, di- the, the, the way how you're engendering uh, a cultural dynamic where the giving and receiving is done differently. So giving and receiving is done differently. Why? Why is it done differently? Well, if you're thinking that what you're doing is that you're potentialising your time beyond the economic good, to potentialise your time beyond the economic good means to say that the indivisibility of your temporality, the, you marginalise the indivisibility of your temporality. Why? Because you're a means towards the end and you're focusing on uh, more temporalizing, uh, more having a primordial kind of lived experience where you are more present you're no longer a means towards the end you're more incarnating or being present as an end all right because you are seeing beyond the supplementary nature of your the time that you otherwise secure so security here is the the the, the most important part because security you're securing always t- um, your time in the future but that securing of time in the future is always against other people doing the same thing so a common surpassing is about securing your future but through the co-cooperative ethos that you engender when you give and receive in a different way they're completely different orientation so what you're doing is you're potentializing culture Potentializing culture is nothing else than potentializing the way how life is given, the way how you receive and the way how you give. Okay, so when you're potentializing your time beyond the economic good, you're, you're essentially marginalizing the rationale of that security uh, against the they because you're potentializing it with other people in a common surpassing. So common surpassing here is just nothing else than resolving upon the creativity that you you leave fallow, that you don't animate in the world to create a common surpassing with other people because you accept your your the world as a given. Now, the context here is that what do we accept as a given? Well, we accept ourselves as marginal. We accept the individualization of the pursuit of the good life. We accept culture as the diminution of culture to the point of its absolute abolition or its, 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 its virtually uh, its disappearance. Um, so we accept all these because why? Because we're market orientated. We're orientated towards our want. Want is primary because uh, money is a given. So when you're looking at a movement a dynamic movement that's going to engender uh, 
a different way of giving and receiving, you can say with the time given. Now, the time given, maybe that's evocative of a slow movement. So what do I mean when I say time given? Well, if you're potentializing your time beyond the economic good in order to potentialize place, and the way how that you're potentializing your time, that the way how you would potentialize your time is through the exceptions that business makes. So they're disposing of the relation of want, otherwise a given of a market oriented way of life when you're only ever considered to be a consumer. So potentialize your time beyond the economic good so therefore approaching you as a person but then they're approaching you as a person for you to demonstrate uh, to make good on or to potentialize that econ- uh, economic good with other people people where you potentialize place so literally in a place well then what you're doing is that you are that that demonstration of it it's the time given that 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 the allowance that we have that the allowance that we allow for that to, to manifest itself as a, as a sign of that potential so that it actualizes that potential that is only given through the exceptions that business make because the thing is if we're looking at a different way of life and a different way of giving and receiving and our way of life presupposes an orientation and that orientation is about marketing and branding well then you have to literally uh bring that to the fore and dispose of that way and to, to literally because you're orientating the um the uh loyalty that would otherwise be um the given of the business uh to to the actual ecosystem or the movement that, that the business is part of so that relates to the way how that you're animating goodwill so when you're looking at a cultural phenomenon you are literally looking at the way how you're animating a goodwill now goodwill why is that important well goodwill is a thing that works contra to basically security so if you're animating um that good that money conceals and goodwill is what uh, what is the allowance well, then you you're not you don't it doesn't presuppose that you have to secure yourself against um, the future. So you you so you have this kind of self preservation because of the future is uncertain. The goodwill you're animating goodwill in the culture that you, it doesn't put that incessant demand on you for you to be orientated in that manner. Now, why is that? Because of the animation of the goodwill, because it's constantly being demonstrated through the emergence because the, the way how it would work is if it works it is if it emerges over time and so the emergence is something that's done marginally so you know potentializing your time beyond the economic good and you're doing it with these other people well then all you'll do you'll get a sign or you'll get an indication that the thing is actually working and like i said the more that it works the more that it works because the more faith and trust that you have in the actual in the actual dynamism in the the goodwill actually animating and not being usurped now when you get to the kind of threshold where you release that then that's the the freedom of of not feeling you're have you're beholden to either a scarcity mindset or the anxiety associated with the future because the the culture has become strong enough that you have faith in that culture because not because you're part of creating it you're an emissary of it or you're immersed in it or you're you're beholden to it in a way where the spiritual higher order where you're sharing creativity is such that you share that and you share that with other people and that becomes the wealth, the commonwealth, becomes the thing that is most precious and it's the most precious because it exists between two people. Nobody, one person claims it, nobody can claim it because it literally exists between every single individual of the community, as it were. So when you're looking at how you're introducing, removing time as a constraint, well, you're not really focusing on on slowing uh the modern way of life down as such you are literally just removing time as a constraint and engendering a different way of giving and receiving whereby the the movement is not even towards um slow but by it just becomes a natural way of life and something that's more uh nourishing of what it means to be human and in that regards um you're 
you're essentially going to be removing a lot of the blights that we accept for ourselves. So we accept the, the fact that we don't have any time. But the only reason why we don't have any time is because we've turned time into an economic good and we're beholden to it. There's a constraint that we work against. We've commodified it to the point of making it precious. And so therefore we have to optimize and economize of it. But economization of something that doesn't exist, like time, when you think about time as an economic good it's just abstracted from our lived experience and so we literally are beholden to an abstraction of life so the way how you got to understand how you can put into play something for culture is to look at okay well if it's abstracted from life then you're just looking at the 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 the, the sign that, that embodies that and that's obviously um money as it were but money is only there as a sign. It's looking at the economic good of your time is the primary focus. So if you don't look at what underwrites our way of life and the incessant demand that, that is always works upon us, like I said, there's no outside our way of life when um, it presupposes the preeminent good of your time. All right, It's it's totalizing in that regards. So when you, if it's totalizing and you're looking at... Um, time is the issue well then you've got to look at the underlying of the disease or the way how that we're beholden to to an understanding of our temporality or the abstraction of the intensive quality of our lived experience now that's that's the way how that you focus on it. and if you focus on that then that is the kind of cultural revolution that that occurs in turns that i've talked about that is just about a turn within the market that is engendering uh, that 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 you'll get a, a glimpse of by temporalizing play. So you know at first events, and then the more events that you have, the more that you're potentializing the ecosystem or the economy, and then the world. The more that you're looking at the kind of vertical integration of businesses, the more that you're looking at the kind of integration towards the ground, the more that you're looking at specific places. It kind of fans out. Um, it does because all you're doing is that you're driving a lot more capability where you're removing a, a blight and ultimately that you, you're you going to just remove a, a way of life that is just a blight and that's a spiritual disease. Anyway, I just thought it would be a good way of approaching if people are familiar with um, slow movement and you know looking at it from a cultural dynamic and how it kind of relates uh, to a degree to what we're kind of talking about. Anyway, until next time, take care.